Today, we're going to turn this microcontroller into a shutter speed tester. Welcome to Hack a Week. Yes, it's electronics day here in the Hack Shack, getting back to my roots, so to speak. This is a Go Whoops, I guess you call it, G O W O O P S microcontroller. It's a clone of a Arduino micro. Picked it up on uh, Amazon pretty cheap. We're going to use this in an OLED display and we're going to breadboard this up and we're going to build a shutter speed tester. So credit where credit is due, this project is uh, from a page I found on the project hub, arduino.cc, and it was posted by Hero Shoots Film, H-I-R-O Shoots Film. Uh, he posted it on there with all of the schematics, a parts list, the code, all of that credited to Hero Shoots Film. I will link to it down below in the comments section but I'm gonna use their project and breadboard this up. And then my spin on it later is going to be to put it into an enclosure. And my goal is to make the whole thing run on a nine volt battery and be portable. Um, we could just make it so it plugs into, I could use a power supply. So I'll probably set it up so it's either way, design a 3D printed enclosure for it, etc. But the very first thing we need to do is get it breadboarded up and see how it works. So I'm just going to show you the project page here. Um, shutter speed tester for film cameras. This is not for digital cameras. It's for film cameras with shutters that are mechanical. They may be electronically operated, but the shutter itself is still mechanical. And essentially what it is, let's look at it there. It's, um, the OLED display, the microcontroller, and a photo transistor, and you set it up where you put light into one end of the camera. Uh, he did it through the lens, and then on the back side, hold a flashlight, hit the shutter, then it will display the speed just like it shows right there. It'll tell you how many milliseconds and also uh, let's see, it's got it one half point two one seconds, so basically a half second exposure there. So I've got a printout of the breadboard here. You have to pay attention to the polarity of the photo transistor. They do mention to be careful of the polarity. I also have a schematic for reference. Right there's the photo transistor and the OLED and a single 10K ohm resistor and the microcontroller. That's all there is to the parts. And here's the pinout for the microcontroller. So I believe on the VN I can power this um, with up to 12 volts and the onboard regulator will take care of the rest. Or I can just run it off USB. Uh, to start out with we're just going to run this thing off from the USB cord which is 5 volts. Alright here we go. Let's do some breadboarding and I'm um, going to save you the boredom and tedium of watching this in real time. We're going to speed it up. So let's go now. That's it. Everything checks out. It's all wired up, ready for testing. First we need to upload the code. So first of all, I'm updating my Arduino IDE. It's been quite a while since I've used it. And Windows is asking me to allow access and I'm gonna say yes. <clears throat> Updates available for some of the libraries. Let's just install all of them. I need to make sure we have uh, a library for the OLED. And there is a link for that on this page. Okay, let's plug in the microcontroller to the USB. Little lights come on. Everybody's happy. 
Now we need to make sure that we can communicate with it. So we're going to go to Tools, Board, Board Manager. Let's see. We want the Arduino Mini or Micro. So let's see, we're going to install this. That should give us all the drivers, everything we need. Okay, so we installed that board and let's see, where are we? We're on tools and the board is on COM4. So let's go ahead and try and upload. Let's go to sketch and upload and we should see some blinking lights going on once it compiles the sketch uploading the code is uploaded and it's working right there it says shutter speed tester so the photo transistor right now is receiving the ambient light in here and it's already done a read on that and that is its baseline. So if anything changes from this amount of light, a significant amount, it's going to trigger it to do a read on how long that light changes and then it will display here our time. I have set up just a little test thing here with an LED and a push button switch on a 9 volt battery so I can just give it a quick blink. So let's go ahead and test and see just what we get. Okay, let's give it a little test. I'm gonna hold this right here and just do a quick press. And yes, it is reading out, but there's a little glitch. If you watch closely on that screen, you'll see what's going on. There's a line that is split in half. It's the yellow and blue, so this is set up where the top couple of rows are in yellow and then down below it's blue and for some reason it's dropping down one line then it's making the display happen so we're gonna have to do a little troubleshooting on the code but it does look like the time the duration is working so basically that was a fourteenth of a second that it uh, held the press for now it'll reset let me hold it down for maybe a half second. It's a pretty fast readout. 2.19, so it looks like it'll go way past one second. I wonder if it triggers it to reset. Nope, I have to wait for it to reset, and then we can do another reading. All right, well, we just need to straighten out that little glitch in the way that the characters are being displayed, so let's see if we can troubleshoot that. All right, let's take a look at this code and see if we can figure out what's up. What we're after is when it writes to the screen. So this is wait until the pulse starts. There are some comments here. Wait till the pulse stops. And initial screen, display text, size one, set the color to white, set the cursor zero comma three. And I am totally getting back up to speed doing C programming. It has been a while, so I need to look at the set cursor command here and see what's up with that. Okay, I think what I need to do is change both of these to zero and that should move it up to the top line. Let's just give it a try and we'll upload it. And you can see uh, right now on the camera better than you can with the naked eye see that dark line right there that's where it goes from yellow to blue so let's give it a try um, since I've moved it up I think we're gonna be okay now yeah now it's just gonna drop down a line and show me the time in uh, yellow and the speed in blue perfect so now we can test it on a camera all right, let's take a look at my test rig here. I've got the old LM386 audio amplifier can <laughs> holding up the breadboard. I've got it lined up where it's centered on the focal plane shutter area, perpendicular to the camera. 
Uh, this is an older Pentax SP2 that I've got to do some work on. And over here on this side, we've got it set up with the LED pointing right into the center of the lens, fairly close. That's running off a 9 volt battery. I've got the shutter speed set to 1 60th of a second. And we're ready to go. I'm going to fire off the shutter and we'll see what this thing reads out. 1 49th of a second. So the shutter is a little off. Let's take it up to 1 25th. One one hundredth. I'm going to take this up to a thousandth of a second and see what kind of a reading we get. It didn't even register that time. Let's try that again. Let's drop down to a five hundredth. Now it will read that. Well, it looks like I'm pretty well stuck with anything below a thousandth of a second to read out, but it's still pretty cool because most of the time what I'm finding on cameras as I'm learning and working on them is the slower speeds are the ones that suffer the most and need adjustment. This is a K1000 Pentax. The lens is off. Um, shouldn't matter. The light's still going to go through the focal plane shutter. I've got it on a five hundredth of a second, and let's see what we read. Oops. 1 357th. It's off for sure, and I knew that. This one definitely needs work. In fact, if I go down to the slower speeds, this should be a half second, and it's like 1 156th. The one second does a quarter of a second, and let's go up to a 60th of a second. And that's reading 150th. So all of those slower speeds are way off. And down in the bottom there, there is an escapement clock mechanism that does the job of all the slower speeds. And at some point, I'll take that apart and fix it. But for now, it's, um, it's a good working tester. There's another camera I want to check it out on. I've got another camera here I want to check out. This uh, has a different, this is a circular shutter, not a focal plane shutter like those other 35 millimeter cameras. This is a Yashica Mat um, medium format camera that I picked up on eBay for a very reasonable price in the original box with the leather case. And it's a twin lens reflex. This is the taking lens. This is the lens you look through when you're taking a picture and then you see it in the viewfinder here on the ground glass. So we can open this up and that's the inside of the camera. There's the lens. We're gonna have to set this up a little bit different. All right, I'll reset and I've uh, got this all set up. The shutter is cocked. The light is on the other side. Let's try one five hundredth of a second. One, two, six, two. So the shutter on this is really slow. Let's try one hundredth of a second. One seventy third. So yeah, this is going to need a little bit of work on this camera. Otherwise, it's a really nice camera. Let's check out the Zeiss Icon Contessa. This one has an infinitely variable um, shutter dial. So it's not like you're clicking right into a definitive stop. Um, but I'm going to put it on one one hundredth of a second. Clock the shutter. One five hundredth of a second coming up. One one seventy fourth. So it looks like this camera also needs some cleanup on the shutter. Okay, we're going to check one more. My Pentax MX. I just did a lot of work on this. I've got it working pretty nice. This has become my favorite uh, compact <laughs> SLR. The size of these was considered a compact 35 millimeter SLR. I'll show you why. Here is, what is this one? This is the uh, Spotmatic. It's like first generation versus the more compact size. It's not quite as tall, weighs a little bit less. And um, I've heard from Another person that does videos on cameras and such that the MX was Ansel Adams' favorite personal SLR. How about that? I'm going to pull the lens off 
for this test just to get a more accurate reading. I don't have to have the light passing through everything. That way we'll get it up nice and close in there. Let's start out with one second. This should be pretty accurate. Yep, one, one. We should see one, two for one half second. One quarter second. Oops, wait a minute, it's gotta reset. Let's go up to 160th, 156, not bad, 125th, 114, 1250th, 234, a little bit slow, but acceptable, I guess, 500th of a second, 444. And one thousandth probably won't read. We've determined this already. Oh, look at that. One eight nine two. It does read that fast. The other one I was trying, I was shooting it through the lens, so maybe that was part of it. Well, that was a successful build. This thing is pretty cool. And um, thank you to Hero Shoots Film, whoever that is, for putting that code up and uh, letting us all partake of it. This is pretty neat. And as we have seen, most of my cameras do need some work. The shutters are inaccurate. So that's why I built this. I wanted to see just what was going on. They're, they're old cameras. It's not a surprise at all that the mechanisms are going to need some work. So I'll be taking those apart in some future videos. But the next thing up, next week is going to be the enclosure for this. Like I said, the goal is to put it all in a nice little container where I can easily adapt it to any camera. So that's a wrap for this week. I hope you liked the video and maybe you can build one of these yourself if you are an older mechanical camera buff and you want to check your shutter speeds. It's a fun little project. Pretty easy. Doesn't cost much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Donate if you like. It's down there in the comment section. And until next time.